particular forms of dressing that way. But having said that, schools do have uniform policies. And I, think there's a, I think these are things to be worked out locally in contact and consultation with parents. I don't think this is something laid down from on high by the Scottish Executive, by the Scottish Parliament. I think doing it is something to be determined locally in accordance with local needs and desires, and in particular with regard to the views of the parents. Bill? Well, we are great believers in uh, getting more people involved in the political decisions that affect our everyday lives and our everyday life. Uh, if the parents of particular school take a particular route, we should support that. Do you think it's right for the head teachers to go back to those who work in the car on the grounds of safety, security, and teaching? If there is a view of the parents that that should be the case, then I would support that. If there is a view of the parents that it's not the case, I would support that. Again, there's withdrawal, but I'm not terribly sure the impact it has in day-to-day -day schooling, and I don't know the details as to why Alan Johnson recommended that in terms of safety in schools. I, I wouldn't say I can see all those issues. As a Scottish uh, politician, and in Scotland, I don't think I'd get, I'd be supportive of that coming into Scotland. There might be some detail that I don't fully appreciate in terms of safety, in terms of some activity we're on, and I, so I wouldn't close my mind to that. But as a principle, I would not be suggesting to other people what we do, particularly I think we need to be open-minded and allow people to be who they are, if that's as far as we possibly can. Alex? Well, I think the English regulations are some, uh, and uh, we shouldn't certainly not have anything uh, like it in Scotland. I, I think the difficulty is that I don't see the, the jack straw all of a sudden not wanting people to come like this dressed in the, his constituency surgery and Alan Johnson's uh, new regulations uh, as anything other than a quite thought out systematic attempt to reverse a previous policy of accepting multiculturalism and people's right to identify and wear and show the badges of identity. I think it's manifestly absurd to start dictating to individual pupils what they shall and shall and shan't wear within reason, of course, and certainly it is quite wrong to start dictating them to uh, move against their religious or badges of identity. But the problem is, this is not accidental, this is not incidental, this is something that's been done deliberately to try and promote a atmosphere of uniformity. And everybody, I mean, the, the fact is that uh, the strong position uh, was celebrated by the tabloids. No doubt the Johnson position will also be. That doesn't make it right and we should have none of it in Scotland. Uh, we should uh, pursue the policy which was a broad consensus across Scottish society that we didn't try to dictate people against the badges of identity. There's a question from Samaya Benson. Uh, my question relates back to what Alex touched upon. I want to know if raids on family homes at dawn with children being snatched and separated from their parents, if this is consistent with a civilised society? Um, I would imagine most people here are very aware, and if they're not, uh, I'm happy to detail it, that the, the First Minister has made some comments recently in relation to dawn raids and, uh, and the role the Scottish Executive play. We have particular concerns where there are children who are very well established in Scotland, very well settled, and they are having that schooling disrupted and having to be taken back home. And for what it's worth, my view is that we, we have to have an immigration system. That immigration system has to have rules, and I think it, all of us have to explain to you those rules. None, no politician gets into this, so there are no easy answers to this, so there's, there's no point in just, you know, saying it's just our issue because everybody's issue. You need an immigration system. It has to have rules. You have to system to police those rules. Otherwise, you are open to gross exploitation because we know the scale of people trafficking that's going on and you have to have rules to protect yourself from that. But the rules must be compassionate, they must be efficient, and they must be fair. And I think what the Scottish Executive has been trying to do has been to make a contribution to that. What about the other panel members? That's an issue for Westminster, but not so. How is it that the Scottish Parliament can speak out or the Scottish Executive can speak out on John Ray's and not other issues? No, that's, I mean, let me make it abundantly clear. We are speaking in relation to devolved matters. And not only something about this in the Education Minister, because I think it's this department that is specifically dealing with it, it is because, you know, particularly where those children, particularly children, there might be adults, I'm not sure, but particularly children have been involved in Scottish services, for example, schools, where we have a direct interest. Social work services is, is our authority as well. That's where we've taken a particular role. I mean, I know people like yourself and sometimes others 
say to us, you know, somehow we're backing off because they're saying it's reserved and it's not the law. You know, it's basically implying that as well. Somehow we're lesser human beings because we're not commenting on that. But what, it is our responsibility to pursue issues that are raised with us. And it's my responsibility to make sure that if I have a concern, that I use all the levers at my disposal to do that. Now, I'm a politician in the Scottish Parliament, and we live in a devolved Scotland, so therefore I'm responsible for these devolved issues. It's not about backing off those issues. It's about my accountable for what the Scottish Executive does, and that's why I'm so focused on that. Bill, do you think raids and family homes are wrong that children need snatched and separated from their parents is consistent with the civilised society? I think that of course should have to be a much more sensitive way of dealing with this. So I'm certainly extremely unhappy with that. But the market is quite correct, which is states that there's got to be a decided policy. Where she is perhaps less from the ground is the fact that the Labour government completely mishandled and failed to get to grips with the scale of the problem a number of years ago. And what we are now left with is a residue of outstanding applications in which people are being returned to the country of origin after having been settled in Scotland for quite some years. But I'm very uncomfortable about that. Uh, what needs to be done is a re-signing application which can be determined as quickly as possible. Those who are allowed to stay up top within the community give every help. Those who are required to go back, go back. But I certainly am very uncomfortable with the question of the children being quite, uh, to be left in a very, very difficult position. It's quite traumatised in some instances as a result of these dog rates. Bill, uh, before I to respond, uh, a young man who was refused asylum a few weeks ago set fire to himself in the immigration building and he died uh, several days later. His immigration asylum application was refused. Uh, he was terrified of going back uh, to the country from which he escaped persecution. If you were First Minister, would you have intervened to ask for him to stay in the country? No, I would not, because it's not for me to determine asylum applications as a matter of law. Uh, the Home Secretary is a matter for an immigration policy. Robert? Well, first of all, I have to say I've had some little experience of this both professionally and politically over a number of years. And in all the time I've had dealings with the Home Office, the Home Office, frankly, has been a shambles, left, right and centre, in its way that it's actually dealt with immigration <coughs> issues. It's almost impossible, it almost has been, to get to talk to anyone, to get a reply to a letter, far less to get movement forward. And I'm not surprised at all with some of the differences that we've actually had with the Home Office over that policy of Dawn Ray. It was absolutely, absolutely right to say that the, the, the nub of the issue has got a lot to do with the fact that the historic cases, you know, you've got lots and lots of young people in Drumchapel and other parts of Glasgow and other places who've been in Scotland for a number of years, speak like anybody else, um, have gone through the education system like anybody else, are to all intents and purposes long-term residents of Scotland. Now, I think any of us with any sort of feeling about this must be hostile to the idea of dragging these people, whether by dawn raids or otherwise, uh, away from their school, away from their families, in this particular <coughs> way. Now, I do accept, as others have done, that there has to be a framework of immigration rules around this, but I think in terms of the way in which this has been done, the immigration removal centres have done a given situation, and so on and so forth, and the dawn raids, the whole thing has been unsatisfactory, but at the lowest, and a block of a civilised society put it at the highest. The Scottish executive, as Martin has touched on, has, I think, done a very considerable amount to try and um, deal with the Home Office in a more satisfactory way because of our interest in young people, in the reporters' department, in the social work department, in the services. So indeed, of South Lancashire Council, Glasgow City Council, and dealings both with Dungable um, and with the Immigration Service, particularly in other regards, I think it's, it's gone a considerable way to try and move forward the whole immigration debate across the United Kingdom in terms of the involvement and the issues that we've been taken up in Scotland. So the short answer to your question, I've gone on a wee bit about that, because it is something I feel strongly about, is that dawn raids are unacceptable, but there does have to be nevertheless um, a, a framework of immigration rules that surround it. <coughs> and the issue, I think, is one of getting these cases dealt with much more speedily and effectively and satisfactorily than they have been traditionally, not just in the recent past, but in the far distant past as well. Alex, you answered this before, but very briefly. Well, well very briefly, I... Uh, I, if the Scottish Executive is dealing with this, then that hasn't worked. Uh, because uh, I'm not implying, Margaret, that other people in this panel are less of human beings. I, I'm stating it's the responsibility, not just of MSPs, but for every adult Scot, not to allow unacceptable practices to take place in our country, whether it's rendition flights or refueling bunker buster bombs or dawn raids dragging children out of the beds in the early hours of the morning. These are unacceptable practices and they should not be allowed to happen. 
And all you have to do is realise just how some the position being put forward, oh, that's reserved, it's not the law. 